In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Synology's Cloud Sync, how to set up a sync task, and how it differs from backup applications that you can use on your NAS. So we're going to get right into creating a sync task. And the first thing that you have to ensure is that you have Synology's Cloud Sync installed. And then in the top left, you're going to see the plus icon. And you're going to be brought to a list of cloud providers that you can use to sync data from your Synology NAS to a cloud location. So the functionality in this is gonna be realistically the same for any one of these providers, meaning that you can sync data from your NAS to the cloud location, from the cloud location to your NAS, or by using a two-way sync. So the functionality is the exact same. The setup process though is gonna be different. So in this tutorial, I'm just gonna use Google Drive, but the authentication options will defer based on whatever you select. So after going through and authenticating inside of Google Drive, the first thing that you're gonna see here is the task settings. So you can go through and you can set up a connection name here, and then we're gonna to have to set a local path and a remote path. So the local path is gonna be what data you wanna sync from your Synology NAS, and the remote path is gonna be the data that you wanna to sync to the cloud storage location. Now right below that, you're gonna see the sync direction. And what you're gonna see is that the default value is bi-directional. And what that means is that any changes on your Synology NAS will automatically upload to the cloud storage location and any changes on the cloud storage location, in our case, Google Drive, will automatically sync to our Synology NAS as well. So the data in both of the folders that we select here will stay in sync automatically using Cloud Sync. Now you have two other options here. The first is download remote changes only. So that means that the data will only sync when it changes in our cloud storage location. So any of the data in my Google Drive folder that changes, if I select this option, will automatically sync to my NAS. But if I go in and I add a file or a folder to my Synology NAS, it's not automatically gonna sync to the cloud storage location. The opposite is true for upload local changes only. So if you wanna upload all of your changes from your Synology NAS to the cloud storage location, but you don't wanna be impacted if that cloud storage location changes, you can use that option. So keep in mind at this point, it's really just gonna be uploading your data. So you have to work from the Synology NAS folder. So the other thing I wanna point out here is data encryption. So if you enable this option at a later step, you're gonna to have to enter in a password. This is important because the data when it's synced from your Synology NAS to the cloud storage location will automatically be encrypted. That means that without that encryption password or the encryption key, you're not gonna be able to access any of the data that exists in that cloud storage location. So this is powerful because a lot of people like to keep their data on their NAS because they control it, meaning that they don't have to worry about where the files are stored or the security or anything like that, at least in terms of the cloud server. So when you have this option enabled, the file will automatically be encrypted when it's synced from your Synology NAS to that cloud storage location, meaning that anyone that can access that file in that cloud storage location can't actually do anything with it. So that's a very powerful option, one that I personally use inside of CloudSync, but you don't have to keep it enabled. If you don't keep it enabled, it's just gonna sync the file from location A to location B without any encryption. Now inside of the schedule settings, we have one option here and it actually can be expanded into tons and tons of different options and we're gonna take a look at that in a second. But realistically, if you keep this unchecked, what it means is that anytime a file is changed, meaning that it should be synced in either direction, it will be synced on demand. So it's gonna be immediate. However, if you want it to run at a specific time only, you can enable this option here and at the bottom here, you can specify when this task should run. So by default, it's gonna be set to run always. However, you can go through and you can uncheck as many of these as you want. So if you want the task to only sync at 3 a.m. every single day, you can set that up. You can basically customize this to any schedule that you want. This is if you don't want the files to be synced immediately. If you do want them, you can completely ignore this step. So after you click next, if you enabled encryption, you're gonna to have to go in and enter in that encryption password again. Now it's very important to understand that if you lose this encryption password, you will not be able to access these files. And when I say password, I really mean the password you just entered or the encryption key that will be exported at the next step. You need one or the other. If you lose either of those options, it's okay assuming you have the other option. So if you forgot the password but you have the encryption key, it's fine. If you don't have the encryption key but you have the password, it's fine. However, if you lose both, you're not gonna be able to access your files. 
So you'll be able to open up the cloud storage location in our case, Google Drive, but the actual files themselves will be unreadable because they're encrypted. So you have to make sure if you use this option that you actually remember that password and you keep the encryption key somewhere safe so that you can restore from it if you ever have to. Now, as soon as you set up the sync task, it's gonna to start to sync those files. And I wanna quickly talk about syncing because syncing is extremely different than a traditional backup. So I've received a bunch of questions on this and I wanna be clear right off the bat that CloudSync is not a particularly good backup solution. So hear me out with this, but CloudSync syncs files from one location to the other. That's what we've you know learned up to this point. But what that really means is that if the data on the source or the destination changes, if it gets corrupted, if anything happens to it, it's gonna automatically sync to the other location. That is true of removals as well. So if you go through and you delete the entire folder off your NAS, it's gonna sync those changes to the destination. So the files will be removed on the destination as well. Now this isn't the case for everything and I wanna be clear on this distinction because there are certain cloud storage locations that do have some type of a snapshot feature. So the reason I wanna make that distinction is because if you think about it from a purely syncing standpoint, when a file changes on your NAS, it's gonna be synced to the destination. Meaning that if someone goes into a Microsoft Word file and deletes the entire contents of that file and they save it, it's gonna sync that blank file from the source to the destination. Now, if the destination doesn't have a snapshot feature, the file that exists on the destination will be blank as well. And you're not gonna be able to roll back to it. You're not gonna be able to view an earlier version of it because one doesn't exist. Now there are certain cloud services that you can use that have some type of a snapshot feature. And if you do use one of those, you'll be able to go back to an earlier version, restore that earlier version, and then you'll be back up and running. But you also have to think about this on a bulk scale. So if someone goes through and deletes all of your files, all of the files will be removed on the destination as well. So depending on the cloud service, you might not be able to actually restore an entire folder back to a point in time. So that's where a tool like Hyper Backup comes in because Hyper Backup is a backup tool on the NAS side itself, meaning that everything is managed on the NAS. So if a file changes today, you're still gonna be able to read that archive that exists on the destination, and you're gonna be able to restore back to yesterday or last week or last month, depending on how everything's set up. So I recommend using CloudSync in tandem with a tool like Hyper Backup because you're gonna get your full backup solution using Hyper Backup, and you're also gonna be able to sync your files in real time. So if you just wanna make sure that the file gets synced to a cloud location immediately, you're gonna be able to utilize that, but you'll also have your Hyper Backup task running at a later point in time. So I have a video for Hyper Backup. I'll leave a pop-up for that now, but none of this is to say that CloudSync is bad. CloudSync is very good. I really like it. I've used it for many years now. I have no problems with it, but it's important to understand the distinction between a sync and a backup. So I just wanna point that out. But I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.